Welcome, student of technology. This is one of my many reading videos. You might think it's kind of strange I'm creating videos of me reading, but seeing how this is for my auditory students, I want them to be able to see the spelling, see the syntax of the code that we're reading, and be able to pause and take notes if need be, or fast forward through the parts that they already know. A um, couple reasons there for me to make a video of reading. Um, if you're like me, uh, reading can be really tough and if you're reading technical documents that can be especially true so I suggest the crazy professor reading game if you just YouTube that you can see some examples um, I've used it on occasion when I've had to go through some really um, dry dry reading before um, now if you are a big auditory learner I suggest the readable app I get most of my stuff from Wikipedia what this app does is searches through Wikipedia articles and it reads it to you It's done in a computer or robot voice as long as you don't mind that you should be fine I'm sure it's better than listening to my voice in fact so definitely check out that app what I'm doing in class with my reading the purpose behind it is I'm just trying to inspire discussion when in class we have a few short paragraphs to read and comment on and those comments turn into um, conversations and those conversations turn into something solid to remember and hopefully help you on the test hopefully help you remember the content we've gone over in class so that's the big difference between these videos and what I'm what I'm looking for in class now just to wrap up I want you to know that reading is the number one indicator of future economic success. It is a big deal of all the things you do in school. Reading is probably one of the most important ones and a lot of times it doesn't matter what you're reading, it just matters that you can understand it, especially if you put in um, enough time and effort can you figure out what the text is saying. And I think this is especially true in the tech industry. If you become a programmer, not only are you going to read through code, but you're going to search for answers and you're going to read a lot of non-answers. It's going to take time and you're going to have to, you know, trudge through it. But in the end, just remember these videos aren't a replacement to reading, just a prelude. Today's reading is titled HTTP and this is day four in computer science principles class. Now, I created this document using um, two other documents. Uh, the first one is an explain it to me like I'm five answer so that I found that on Reddit. Um, I really like this whole explain it to me like I'm five concept so hopefully this kind of breaks down what HTTP is for you. It's going to throw out quite a few vocabulary words for us to touch on later but at least you're a little introduced to them right now. And then the other a document I used to create this one is an RFC so that's really popular in the tech world RFC stands for request for comments and this idea has been around since 1969 it's the idea that engineers computer scientists themselves will create these publications and they're very technical documents on the internet if you play Fallout 4 and you're working for the Brotherhood, you have to find technical documents, these things that are really tough to read, and return it to the Brotherhood scientist guy. Um, that's what an RFC is, just a very technical document. So, Hypertext Transfer Protocol is what HTTP stands for. So your computer is connected to the internet and has a unique address. How does it talk to other computers connected to the internet? Let's say your IP address is 1234 and you want to send a message to the computer 5678. The message you want to send is hello computer 5678. Obviously the message must be transmitted over whatever kind of wire your computer connects to or if we're talking Wi-Fi uh, through the air right so let's say you've dialed in your ISP from home and the message must be translated um, transmitted over the phone line okay so therefore the message must be translated from alphabetic text into electronic signals you know that as binary and then translated back into text how does it do this well through the use of a protocol stack every computer needs one to communicate on the internet and it is usually built into the computer's operating system so the protocol stack used on the internet is referred to as the TCP IP protocol stack because of the two major communication protocols it, it uses alright so HTTP is um, is a type of TCP IP 
A protocol consists of specifications, usually a detailed plain text description of the different messages and their meanings, and an implementation. That is a combination of software and hardware that does what the specification says. So you can find implementations of different protocols in routers and servers. An implementation is just the hardware and or software that causes the machines to behave in ways specified by the protocol. Um, now this next part here, this is straight from the RFC itself. It's a 176 page document. So what I tried to do right here is just pull out an example so you could kind of wrap your head around um, what it means to, to use this protocol, HTTP. So this is what's called a re request response protocol. That's the type of protocol it is. And the example is a web browser can initiate a request to a server, typically by opening a TCP IP connection. The request itself comprises of a request line, a set of request headers, and an entity. So this right here is nicely illustrated for the visual learners in today's, today's video. So at this point, the server sends a response that comprises of a status line, a set of response headers, and an entity. The entity in the request or response can be thought of simply as a payload of binary data. Now, if you like hacker movies, shows, or tutorials, you may have heard this word before, payload. Uh, not too big a deal. It's just what it says here. It's a payload of binary data. When the response has been completed, either the browser or the server may terminate the TCP IP connection, or the browser can send another request. So briefly, this is just an exchange between a web browser and a Silicon Press server. So let's say this website is uh, www.siliconpress.com. All right, so the browser sends this, get HTTP version 1.1, um, connection, keep alive, user agent, the browser is Mozilla. Um, what is it accepting? Text in these image types, these types of encodings, these types of characters, and this type of language from the host siliconpress.com. So now, responding to the browser, the server is going to send this, that it's OK. Uh, the connection's okay. We'll learn more about these numbers later. Um, and then this version of HTTP is okay. The date, um, these will always be in Greenwich Mean Time. So that's what all servers are using just to uh, keep co the confusion from time zones down. Uh, the server type is Apache, last modified, E tag, acceptable ranges, content length and then a connection status. So that's what the server sending back. Um, I'll just leave it at that. If you're really brave and want to dig through this RFC more, 176 pages or so, uh, definitely go for it. But at this point, I just want everyone to know that we'll revisit this later. Uh, we'll dig through some of the vocab words um, later and take away the abstractions. For now, just as a takeaway, know that HTTP is huge and it is responsible for the internet as we know it today.